Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's July 28th, 2018. I'm up in the second food forest area, not too far from the compost pile that's right behind the camera. Up near the, the road, uh, the swales are up, up behind me up here. But right uh, today, I thought I'd share with you uh, a problem that I'm having with the grapevines. I've talked about these grapevines in the past. Uh, these are Concord uh, grapes, and uh, we got several vines from uh, a friend in Syracuse, New York, about 35-40 minutes uh, south of here, and uh, got those from cuttings, I think two or three years ago, probably three years ago now, and I put them in up here and they've done absolutely fantastic. And last year they produced quite a few grapes, uh, but you know the birds got the majority of the grapes. So this year I went ahead and put bird netting up on here. I actually was going to post a video about this, but it was uh, a little underexposed uh, the day that I shot the video. But anyways, uh, we have this on this two, uh, two strands of galvanized uh, cable. Uh, and it's worked out extremely well. And uh, I had the bird netting over it, and oh, several days ago we had a nice windstorm and it blew most of the bird netting off. So yesterday I came up here to uh, put the bird net, uh, to, to remove the rest of the bird netting so I can mow right alongside of the uh, grapevines and then put the bird netting over it. And, uh, and I discovered a problem. We have uh, another opportunistic uh, fungal disease that affects uh, those grapevines, uh, plants that, uh, that are not resistant to black rot. Uh, it's another fungal disease. Uh, I, I, from what I've read, it's a fairly common one. And uh, typically people uh, suggest using uh, fungicides to control it and to do routine practices like every week uh, using a fungicide and on. We don't do any of that stuff here. And uh, my mission is to try and uh, decrease as much of the affected uh, grapes and grapevine that I see today. I'm going to go ahead and load it in Pepe, uh, bring it up to be composted in another pile. And that's something that isn't recommended. Uh, typically they say go and burn all the affected material, move it off your property. Uh, but these, the fungal spores are ubiquitous, they're every place. And that's why it's, it's such a, a problem. My approach is let's go ahead and debulk the affected uh, diseased plant tissue that, that, that we see today. Let the rest of the plants uh, bear out whatever is going to happen with them and uh, prune them down this fall after the, the leaves uh, come off. And, uh, and we won't do any treatments whatsoever. The treatment that we'll do is we'll be focusing on our soil and trying to improve the, the soil quality because I look at uh, disease processes like this when we have a, an, what I'm calling an opportunistic fungal, uh, fungal organism. Uh, it's an opportunistic pathogen, so it, it isn't, when I say opportunistic, uh, if we have an immunodeficiency in our bodies, we're, we're more susceptible to opportunistic infections. And if our immune system is, isn't up to speed, then it isn't necessarily keep going back and fighting off that opportunistic inf infection, whether it's using fungicides or antibiotics or whatever it may be. Uh, I think the best approach is trying to see, can we, do, can we address the underlying uh, compromising immune system? What's really causing it? And the microbiome is is really one of the most important factors, especially in medicine now, uh, looking at the human microbiome within the digestive system, on the skin surfaces. Having the right organisms there uh, really strongly influences the immune status of the person. Or the animal and I believe it's probably the same thing with the plant species as well so I need to focus better uh, more on our soil uh, up here and it's 
I basically put them in because I had the opportunity. I did use compost here in the past. I have to do some reading to see what uh, microorganisms are the best organisms for uh, grapevines. If there's anyone who's, who's got a, a significant amount of experience in that area, please leave a comment below because I'd really like to find a great uh, peer-reviewed uh, literature source, if at all possible. But anyways, I'll show you what the uh, what it looks like. So first I'll, I'll say that uh, the leaves look pretty darn good here. This one has some of the uh, telltale signs on, on the leaf here. The dark spots with, with a more uh, tan uh, periphery around it. Something that I probably would not have noticed before. And that's a split grape because of weather and all, but there are some small little really dark spots on some of these these grapes themselves so on this uh this cluster of grapes you could see some of them already consolidated right down to small they turn brown they shrink down uh pretty significantly here are some of the affected leaves down here hopefully this is showing up this is a new lens that i've been working with so th this is uh, the vine that's most severely affected. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take most of these clusters off, really break this one down, compost the material, and, uh, and I'm not going to pull these plants out. I'm going to give them another year at least and see if I can keep working with the soil and improve the conditions so that the overall health status of these plants will do well. So let's see how things go.
Okay, I just got uh, finished doing a pretty heavy pruning on the grapevines. Um, things that I should mention, uh, things that really help promote the growth or the, uh, the multiplication and uh, redistribution of the fungus that's responsible for black rot in grapevines is heat and humidity and this you know over a month period of time we've had uh, exceptionally high although it's been a drought we've had it's been very muggy very very high humidity well into the 90s most of the days over the last oh 30 35 days so those two factors help to contribute to the uh, to the distribution and uh, establishment of the, fun the, the fungus that was actually affecting these grapevines. Now I hadn't been doing mowing and many of these grapevines and I hadn't been pruning. Uh, the grapevines had sm uh, side shoots that were coming off at the lower wire uh, on the ground, close to, closer to the ground. And, uh, and with the grass being so tall because I hadn't been mowing because it had been so dry, uh, one of the things that happens is there's a higher humidity, less airflow going to the grapevine. So uh, another thing I did, I put some tree guards after pruning them on the base of each one of the vines. And then I went through with the two-wheeled uh, weed whacker to whack down the material right around the base to increase airflow, to decrease the moisture content below the grapevines as well. That along with the heavy pruning I think will help out uh, significantly. Um, I do have to do some earthworks around the base of these grapevines. Uh, I had to do earthworks in this path right here uh, last year because uh, you know my truck and trailer would get stuck in here. So I put in two cutaway swales going from the main swale to the road. And uh, it was during a very wet time so there's mounds of dirt and it doesn't have really excellent drainage below these grapevines, which I didn't think of as being a problem at that time, but I could see if I, I need to come up here with the excavator, knock down the high spots, and increase the, 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 the amount of crown that these grapevines uh, have at their bases. I also have to work on the soil. Uh, we need more compost amendments for this, and I have to see uh, determine what, it, what, what microorganisms are the optimal microorganisms, what are the most effective microorganisms to promote their health and sustainability. So that's something I got to do some more work with. Uh, I decided also to leave the bird netting off. I just rolled that up, put it in the back of Pepe. Uh, the birds can have the grapes that are here. Uh, I'll be able to get easy access to doing any more pruning if I see any more of the of the fungus taking over with the grapes. And maybe I'll just take all the grapes off. I, I just don't know yet. Uh, but that's as much as I'm going to do today. But this was another one of those failures and I often want to share some of the challenges that we, we face and how I'm going about it. And later on there will be a follow-up video to say, geez, this isn't working. I need to do more additional things or I, or I approach this wrong. Uh, we'll just see. Only, only the future will tell. Uh, but so much for these challenging times with the, with the droughts and the high humidity and excessive heat. It's been a challenge this year, especially with that really cold spring. And I don't know that that contributed to the fungal development as well. So if you found this of interest, please give it a thumbs up, uh, share it with your friends, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we post more videos. Uh, ask any questions you'd like. If you've got a comment about this, if you've had experience with this, and you do things organically without using any sort of ke chemicals at all, uh, please leave comments below. Uh, I really appreciate it. Well, thanks so much, folks, and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye now.